Welcome to the Wealth Wise Show. I'm your host, the Wise Investor. Join me today as we discuss many different financial tools that can be utilized in your everyday financial life. Uh, we're, we discuss all sorts of things from financial literacy, financial education, um, just things and tips and tricks that you can utilize in your uh, financial journey. So to get started, just want to um, have this disclaimer. This information is provided as general information and is not intended to be any specific in financial or tax guidance. Before you make any financial decisions regarding your personal finance situation, you should consult a financial or tax professional to discuss your individual circumstances objectives. So keep in mind guys, this is for educational purposes only. This is not meant to be uh, for you to use as your personal financial um, advice. So I'm not your financial advisor. Uh, unless you are my client, then thank you for listening. Um, so here we go for today's episode of the Wealthwise Show. Alrighty. Welcome to today's episode, guys. Um, at the start of the episode, just want to clarify, guys, that uh, all the information presented by uh, me, uh, the Wise Investor, is for educational purposes only. It is not meant to be used as financial advice. I do not give financial advice um, on the internet, uh, unless you're a client of mine. Um, but yes, so take everything I say is for educational purpose only. It's for you to learn um, and not act on. Um, so today's episode, uh, I wanted to talk about um, how you can utilize uh, this is kind of a callback to our first episode about bonds, but not just, you know, U.S. Treasury bonds, but corporate bonds, municipal bonds, um, the different types of bonds that you can mix and match in your portfolio to give you a, a I would say, a safety net, uh, essentially. Um, so uh, let's go into uh, the U.S. Treasury. So this month uh, now I'm recording this uh, not the same week you're probably going to be hearing this uh, I'm recording this in June uh, June 23rd to be exact um, on a Friday uh, I think it was last week the Fed uh, Federal Reserve uh, Chairman Powell he him and the board or the committee decided not to raise rates which is you know great um, but keep in mind we're still in a high interest rate environment so if you have credit card debt, if you're trying to uh, purchase new debt, like, you know, with a loan or things like that, uh, it's going to be expensive. Um, yeah, even if the rates are not going down and are not going up, it's still going to be an expensive rate. Um, so one of the things that I like to teach people is, OK, yes, debt might be expensive. But it's also expensive for your favorite companies and the U.S. government. So when interest rates are being raised, typically what will happen is the interest rates on uh, U.S. Treasuries go up as well, as well as the debt, the cost of debt for corporations. And one of the things I want to mention is growth companies, tech companies to be exact, they live off of debt. Like a lot of them thrive, you know, off of loans essentially to innovate. So, you know, think about that. If they have to purchase debt or not purchase debt, if they have to loan money and get into debt, you know, who are they loaning money from? Well, a lot of times these corporations issue bonds um, and you can buy those bonds. You, the viewer or the listener can buy those bonds and collect interest on those bonds. Um, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Back to the interest rate talk. So you got the Federal Reserve uh, at the time of this recording, they paused and they did say that, you know, there might be appropriate for a couple of more rate hikes this year, which is nice if you are an owner of debt. Not if you, you know, owe somebody, but it's nice if you owned it, uh, essentially. 
So why would that be nice? Well, it's nice because, you know, you get interest on a asset that has very low risk. So if you're getting, let's say 5%, if you're getting 5% on a U.S. Treasury bill or note, uh, which is, you know, the debt that the U.S. Treasury issues out, if you're getting 5% on that with the promise of getting your principal back at the maturity date, which is can be anywhere from one month to, you know, 30 years. Uh, but typically, you know, if you're talking about short term debt, they're going to have the highest interest rate at the time, at this moment, at the time just re just recording. Um, you're going to have the ability to set out on the market volatility because right now the market is going down. Uh, we hit some highs. Um, and now, you know, we, we, we're tracing back down. And one of the things that I like to teach people is equities are nice. You know, I, I love equities. You know, that's how you build equity. Um, buying stocks, buying stock in corporations allows you to own those corporations, essentially. But a lot of times those corporations are have a risk, a uh, sy systemic risk. Now, what is systemic risk? Systemic risk is systematic risk is, you know, the system like it's unavoidable. Like, you know, if let's say a company is doing really, really well, but legislation, not legislation, well, legislation, too. But let's say let's say like tech company, a tech company is doing really, really well, but the interest rates start going up. You know, it doesn't matter how well you're doing. They're going to get hit by that, you know, no matter how good. They are the insulate from systemic risk is really difficult. Um, so that's one of the things where it's like, okay, if you're only in um, equity stocks and you don't have anything to protect pr principal, uh, at least alleviate some of the stress of you know the downward terms or downward times, then your portfolio is not diversified. Some people think the first diversification in a portfolio is having, you know, tech stock growth or tech stocks, you know, uh, consumer discretionary stocks, you know, uh, industrial stocks, you know, financial stocks. But you still ha have stocks at the end of the day. So how is that diversified? You're still exposed to, you know, not only the unsystematic risk, but the business risk of the companies you're purchasing, but you're exposed to the systematic risk. And that's where people don't understand the word diversification. So when you want to diversify your portfolio, bonds are a great asset to think about. Talk to your uh, financial advisors, do your research. Remember, this is for educational purposes only. I'm not saying go out and buy U.S. Treasury bonds. I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying is think about, you know, protecting your gains. So right now, you know, we've hit 52 week highs in a lot of stocks in the market and even the S&P 500. If those are gangs that are like, you know, you want to protect, how are you going to protect them? Some people want to say, well, you can sell the, you, know, you can sell some of your um, stock to get the gains and, you know, okay, that is a one way to do it. But what do you do with the money that you just made? You just let it sit in your brokerage account. And that's where bonds come into place, because if you think about it, if you have in the, the ability to earn 5% interest on cash that is just sitting there in your one of your accounts, then why not take the profit that you just made and earn interest on it while you wait for the market to cool off and then go back in? And you see what I'm saying? See the what, I, what I'm trying to paint this picture now of course i'm not trying to you know uh like i say do everything for everybody i'm not trying to do that i'm not trying to hold your hand and be your financial advisor because like i said i don't give financial advice but this is one of the things where you know education is important not just literacy uh and i know people might say well isn't that the same thing and there's they're similar but you can be literate and not have education. So, you know, and what I mean by that is, well, I guess let me change up the word education. I mean, knowledge, like wisdom. I guess that's 
a, a, a good term for it, wisdom. You can have the knowledge, but not the wisdom. So as you guys hear me, I'm working this out as I speak. But yes, so me as the wise investor, I want to impart wisdom on my listeners and people who, you know, might have the information, but don't have the wisdom to apply the information. So back to the bond talk. So right now, um, you can, I'm not going to, says I'm not affiliated with any apps or brokerages. And there are a couple of them that makes it easy to buy your treasury, but they're not sponsoring this show. So I would like them to, if you know who you are, you know, uh, one of them starts with a P, um, you know, you can sponsor this show and I would definitely, uh, tell the people about you, but there's a, there are plenty of avenues to go buy us treasuries. Uh, they sometimes can be difficult. You can buy it directly from the U S government on auction and that could be a little difficult, but a lot of brokerage accounts, a lot of banks and brokers allow you to buy U S treasuries on the second market, secondary market. Um, and so the U S treasuries like U S bond or U S bonds, notes and bills, they are virtually safe. They're not, I can't say a hundred percent safe. I can't cause you know, there are some risks, but they're a lot safer than equities when it comes down to securing your principal and getting your interest. The U S don't default on their debt. They never have. And, um, if you are in a certain tax bracket, you can do municipal bonds. So let's say you're in, like I'm in the state of Florida where we don't have um, state tax. So you're in the state of Florida, you don't have state tax. You can buy municipal or municipal bonds in the state of Florida. I'm talking about for me, but this is not advice, but you can buy in the municipal income, the municipal bond income is federal tax free. See there? So you don't have to pay taxes on the federal level when you're buying municipal uh, bonds. And if you're at a certain tax bracket, that's beneficial because it allow you to collect income without having to pay, you know, that additional tax, especially if you have a lot of income or a lot of, you know, money that is tied up into the municipal bonds. And the beautiful thing about that is, you know, you, whatever there's a municipal municipality, cities, governments, doesn't matter. You can buy them anywhere in the state. Now, I like the state of Florida because I lived here and therefore, you know, I don't have to pay state tax. So, you know, that's a, a win for me. But you do have to pay state tax if you add a, you know, a state that requires you to pay state tax. Um, but a lot of times, you know, depending on the percentages, you know, it might be more conducive for you to go that route instead of, you know, um, the corporate route, which I'm about to talk about next, which is corporate debt. So like I said, a lot of companies issue out debt and the thing is they, they have to, uh, especially tech companies, um, you know, issuing, uh, equity is one way, but issuing out debt is another way to, you know, bring in money to use for, um, your company. And the beautiful thing about corporate debt is they pay a higher interest rate than the U S treasury. Well, why is that? So you ever heard of, if you ever watched the, the movie, the big short and the movie, the big short, um, they were, you know, banking that the mortgages and a lot of these, um, tranches, um, we're going to fall and then collapse the system, which, you know, it happened if you lived in or eight. Um, but a lot of these, um, mortgages had ratings, a rating system on them. So you had the triple a, the double a, the a, then the double B or the triple B, then double B and, and et cetera. So those are a rating system. So like how we have a credit rating system for ourselves. So like our FICO score, Co companies also have a credit rating as well. And they're just letters instead of a number. So the, the once again, the best is, let's say the standard and pours, uh, which is the S and P, um, triple a. So if you're a triple a company, that means you don't pay, you pay your debt. Uh, you have a good running with 
entry in debt and paying it back and with the interest without no late fees or nothing or not being late and etc um and that is important because you know just like if you have a high credit score you have a lower interest rate so if you have a company that's triple a they're going to pay, uh, pay a lower interest rate when they issue debt but and as it goes further down the more risky you get the higher the interest rate so what thing about corporate debt is you know a lot of your favorite companies are not triple a believe it or not um you know i hate to break it to you <laughs> a lot of your companies are not triple a uh, so let's say for example i own a company and i have their equity so i own their stocks i'm sorry i'm keep using uh advisor talk and i'm trying to not to use advisor talk so people who are listening who don't know what i'm talking about they can kind of grasp what i mean um but let's say um a company issue out you know stocks and you buy their stock well why not at the same time look into if it fits your you know portfolio and strategy and if it talk to your portfolio manager and your advisor you know why not just throw in some of their debt if the company's good of course uh, that way even if the stock let's say it's a growth company and it don't offer any um dividends when the stock goes down if you own some of their debt you're still going to be getting paid from them and then of course when you know the maturity date comes they got to pay you back your your principal uh, and for those who don't know what a maturity date is it's essentially where the debt comes due that's where the day that is set that says hey I will pay you back let's say to let's say next month I'll pay you back next month on this day maturity day is basically next month on that day so when I say maturity that's what I mean but why not just you know mix and match you know and that way you know even if the appreciation comes down or your your stock portfolio depreciates you know your bond portfolio should you know level that depreciation out that way you're defending your gains you're defending defending your equity and you're allowing yourself to have cash for when the downturn is over let's say you got a six month stock or six month bond from a company that you own you know in six months the company could be doing great again but it's at its lows so when the maturity happens you get your interest you get your principal back so now you can you know put recycle it back into the equity if you like it uh, so there's a bunch of different things you can do when you are um having a diversified portfolio which is you know st without just having stocks you know bonds too so the three major things that I want you guys to take away from this episode is one a diversified portfolio does not mean having all your money in one asset class so if you have equity and your portfolio consists of a hundred percent equity your portfolio is not diversified I hate to break it to you even if you have you know different stocks and different things and blah 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 different um, sectors it's not diversified um, because the stock market uh, as a whole has systemic risk uh, and you really can't diversify against that but you can try to you know lessen the burden um, to bonds might sound like it's for old people but it's not if you view bonds because it is a fixed income asset meaning you know the interest rate is fixed it's not going to adjust it's not going to go up and down the interest rate is that's what they're going to pay you in interest but it's an asset that can be utilized by no matter how old you are it doesn't like you know people who look at bonds as boring clearly don't know the bond market <laughs> um so the bonds are one of the m most they have the most i guess say, i would say market cap you know trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars are in the bond market and everyday money managers uh advisors uh very wealthy people you know non-wealthy people everyone uses them um so 
to mystify that, um, that's what I'm looking for. I guess to mystify that um, notion that, you know, the myth that bonds is for old people and, you know, it's boring. Because right now, earning 5% is great. 5% on something that, you know, you really don't have to watch. Because the thing about bonds is you can just buy them and hold them into maturity. And once they mature, you get your principal back. Now, when they mature, you got to go in and reallocate some money. But that's it. You you don't have to really do anything. You don't have to keep up with the news. Like, especially if you got U.S. Treasuries, because the U.S. government is going to pay his debt. So that's one of the things that, um, you know, the second thing I want people to stop worrying about is, you know, oh, a bonds is for old people. No, it's not. You just don't understand what bonds are. Then the third thing I want to mention is diversify even with your bonds. So if you had a certain tax bracket, you know, if you're in a higher tax bracket, the income you get from corporate debt might be, you know, not advantageous because you got to pay interest on it. So, you know, if you, and there's a calculation that they teach us when you're learning uh, how to be an advisor, but municipals are, like I said, free from federal income tax. So you have to do the math, okay? If I take this lower percentage, but I have free income tax, would that offset if I were to buy this corporate debt with a higher interest rate, but I still got to pay the taxes on that? So that's that's more of a tax question and something you really got to sit down and talk with your advisor about. But if you're in a high tax bracket, you know, why not? Why are you not using all the different avenues to protect your hard earned income? You know, um, so, yeah, that's pretty much the three that I want to the things I want to talk about. Um, but one uh, another thing I wanted to mention is I'm going to try to do some more videos, uh, but I'm, I think I'm going to focus mostly on audio at this current moment. So still subscribe to my YouTube. Um, you know, things are going to be on there regularly, but um, I really want to because something that I saw earlier what, this week was, you know, being a podcast, the video is great. Don't get me wrong, but podcast is mostly audio. So I don't want to be a, a person with a YouTube show. <laughs> you know, I want to you know, delve into the audio podcast space. And so that's what I'm doing. And the audio, the visuals will be just an additional little thing. So I am working on it. I have my setup. I have everything, cameras, everything, lights. It's just, you know, um, a lot of times I like making these podcasts looking bummy. So <laughs> that is why uh, if I have to do a video, I got to get all done up, get my hair done, you know, all that jazz. And then sometimes I don't feel like doing all that. Um, so, guys, I appreciate you listening again. I really hope I imparted some wisdom. Um, if I did not, feel free to shoot me a message and let me know what I can work on. Um, what would you like to hear? Do you have any questions and things like that? Just let me know. Uh, and I, I, like I said, I do my best to uh, give you guys the best, essentially. So that's going to be it. Uh, I thank you for joining me on another wonderful episode of the Wellfire Show. Uh, like I said, I appreciate you guys. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, like us on Instagram or follow us on Instagram at the Wellfire Show, um, as well as our, you know, Spotify. Five, rate us, follow us on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you listen to our Apple podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, if they have a rating system, if you liked it, give us a good rating. Uh, I would greatly appreciate that. And if you're listening and you got a company you want to be on our show and sponsor, I'm happy to oblige you on that as well. Um, so thank you guys for taking the time to listen to me talk. I appreciate it. Um, and, you know, make sure you guys stay hydrated. <laughs> Until next time, guys, stay well, flies.
investment advisory and financial planning services offered through Simplicity Wealth and SEC Registered Investment Advisor. Sub advisory services are provided by Simplicity Solutions LLC, a registered investment advisor. Any insurance consulting and education services offered through the Webfly Show. The Webfly Show is not affiliated with Simplicity Wealth and Simplicity Solutions.